Hi, and Merry Christmas. This is Gordo, and once again, I'm on this high-bias, high-fidelity cassette tape to deliver my season's greetings to you. Now, as you may know, last year I decided that Christmas cards just don't reflect what I really feel about Christmas. So I came up with this idea of putting my Christmas card on tape. And now, to be honest with you, I was completely overwhelmed by the response. It deeply moved me to find out that whole families actually sat down together to listen. And so it was with great joy that I decided to make this a Christmas tradition. So once again, gather up the kids, put another log on the fire, and pour yourself a glass of your favorite Christmas cheer. And now live and in hi-fi stereo, this is my Christmas card. Now this year, I'd like to tell you a true story, one that actually happened to me. Now I know you're not going to believe me. In fact, right now you're probably saying, oh, it's just another one of Gordo's wild stories. And to me, even now, it doesn't seem real. But please believe me, it's true. It was Christmas night, one year ago. I had just returned home, and I was feeling that peculiar Christmas night emotion, you know, somewhere between happiness and sadness, when all the packages have been opened and the turkey's been cooked and eaten, and Christmas is almost over. But it isn't. And I had just settled into bed, and I was almost asleep when there was a knock at my door. What the? Jeez, who's at my door? It's after midnight. Okay, okay, I'm coming. What the? Elves. There were elves at my front door. Right here in Texas, elves. Well, I didn't know what to think. I mean, what could I think? Santa forgot something? Or perhaps he left the wrong gift and sent the elves to retrieve it. But when they spoke, it was even more unbelievable. They had been sent to retrieve me. They told me that I was to bring a portable tape recorder and go with them. So I grabbed my trusty pro Walkman and walked outside when, if you'll pardon me for stealing a line from last year's story, what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Now let me stop right here for a second, because I know you don't believe me. I know that because I wouldn't believe it myself. But here comes the truly incredible part of this story. What you are about to hear is the actual tape-recorded account of what happened next. Hello? Test, test, test. Is this thing working? I, I, I can't tell if I'm recording or not, but I'm going to assume for now that I am. I'm not sure if I'm awake or if I'm dreaming, but this is the most unbelievable thing that's ever happened to me. Right now, I'm flying in a sleigh which is being pulled by reindeer and driven by elves. We've been flying for almost an hour now, and it's, it's really cold. As close as I can tell, we're somewhere over Canada. I think they're taking me to the North Pole, but I can't be certain since the elves who are driving haven't said a word since we left home. Wait a minute. I, I think we're getting ready to land. It's very dark, and there isn't much to see except the moon reflecting off the snow. But I can, I can just barely make out some lights ahead. Wow, it looks like a city built completely out of snow. It must be the North Pole. Yes? Oh, okay. Okay, I think we're going to land in the street near the center of town. Yes? Whoa, what a landing. These guys should fly for the airlines. Huh? What? You want, you want me to follow you? Sure, okay. Okay, okay, we're going into the main building now. Wow, this place is huge. I don't believe it. This has to, it must be Santa's workshop. I can't even describe this place to you. It's like some kind of huge factory that makes every kind of toy you've ever seen and, oh my gosh, it's Santa Claus himself. They're taking me to Santa Claus. Ho, 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 Gordo, Gordo, come here. So glad you could come visit me. Uh, Santa, I mean, Mr. Santa. <laughs> come sit down, Gordo, relax. You'll have to pardon me for not standing, but last night was the longest Christmas Eve since 1943. <laughs> I, I trust you got here in one piece. I, I usually don't let the elves drive the sleigh at all. <laughs> oh, no, no, Santa, the, the trip was fine. Uh, but wow, this is incredible. You and your workshop and all. But I don't understand what I'm doing here. Am I dreaming? Oh, no. 
You're not dreaming. I had the elves bring you here because I wanted to talk to you. Gee, Santa, I know you keep a list and all, but I didn't do something really oh, bad, did I? No, no, but I have to admit, the elves and I do get a good laugh out of your list every year. <laughs> I, I like to post it on the bulletin board and the elf commissary. <laughs> But seriously, Cordo, I, I brought you here because I wanted to send a message to the world. And after the elves brought me that Christmas tape you made, I thought you, of all people, might be able to help me. About that tape, however, that was the worst imitation of me I've ever heard. <laughs> was, was that you? <laughs> and, and while I'm on the subject, I want to say that that poem about me was written a long time ago, and I take slight offense at that description of me now. I assure you that Mrs. Claus put me on a diet long ago. <laughs> well, gee, Santa, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you or anything. Oh, no. But I don't understand. What kind of message could I possibly help you with? Oh, well, Gordo, over the past few years, I've become more and more concerned that too many people don't believe in me anymore. And those who do believe think that I just bring toys to the children. <laughs> and indeed, I do. <laughs> just, just, Just look at this place. I can turn out more toys than all the toy companies on Earth. Oh, but, but that's not why I'm here. Santa's job is to bring joy and happiness to everyone, young and old. That's what Christmas is all about. I believe in you. Of course, if I didn't before tonight, I sure do now. But I sure can't imagine Christmas without Santa Claus. I think everyone believes in you, if only just a little bit. I mean, how else can you explain the fact that your picture is everywhere at Christmas time? <laughs> I think someday I'll pass out photos of myself so they can get those pictures right in the paper. <laughs> I just want people to accept the true meaning of Christmas. You see, old Santa here didn't invent Christmas. I'm just its ambassador. And it's my job to spread the joy through giving gifts. But it makes me very sad that... Most of my gifts are never received. Uh, gee, Santa, I don't understand. Well, you see, when I first became Santa Claus, it became my job to spread the joy. And I did that the only way I knew how. I used to be a toy maker, don't you know? And, and the children, oh, 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 they, they love the toys. The grown-ups, well, grown-ups are tougher. Always have been. I leave them a different gift. A much more important gift, but sadly, most of them never see it. <laughs> but... But some of them receive it and never know it. <laughs> I, I could tell you some stories, Gordo. But, but Santa, what is your gift for grown-ups? Oh, oh, you see, you haven't seen it either, Gordo. Oh, maybe I'm getting too old. The gift is peace and goodwill. I can't believe so many people don't get it. I leave it everywhere. They are as thick with it at Christmas time. Well, just look around you. It's at the shopping malls. It's at the office. People who aren't friendly all year suddenly say and do nice things. <laughs> they call it the Christmas spirit, but no one realizes it's a gift, and it's meant to last all year. It's all a part of the true meaning of Christmas. I think I'm beginning to understand now, Santa, but I'm still not clear on what is the true meaning of Christmas. It's sort of a celebration of glad tidings for the whole human race, but it's much deeper than that. Even I don't fully understand the true meaning of it. I used to think maybe the elves knew what it was about, but even they don't know. <laughs> of course, there's a lot of things the elves don't know about. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, but I'm just one person. What can I possibly do? Oh, well, to start with, next time you make one of those Christmas card tapes, tell your friends I'm alive <laughs> and tell them I bring them a gift every year and tell them if they want to find it, <laughs> tell them to look under their noses, not their tree. <laughs> well, Santa, just, just one more thing. Aren't you worried I might tell someone where your workshop is? <laughs> no, not from you, Gordo. <laughs> With your reputation as a storyteller, they'd never believe you. <laughs> oh, got to go, Gordo. See you next year. Well, Santa just got up and walked out, so I guess that's all he wanted to say to me. I think I'll just browse around here and look at some of the... And wouldn't you know it, my tape ran out. Well, later that night, after the elves brought me home and I finally got to sleep, 
I had the most incredible dream. I dreamt that everyone on earth found Santa's gift and kept it for an entire year. I can't even describe it to you. Well, anyway, that's my story. I took Santa's advice and decided to play you the tape of what he said. And I don't know, maybe you believe me and maybe you don't. It's up to you. But this holiday season, when you're out shopping and some stranger smiles and holds a door open for you or just says, Merry Christmas. Look around you, Santa's sure to be nearby. Merry Christmas to all, and to all, good night.